Okay, I've got a couple packs of Comart paints here. Uh, this one here is for scenery. They give you a lot of earth tones and some uh, colors for flowers and uh, little brighter colors there. Um, this one is great for groundwork and so forth. Uh, the next one is actually on weathering, which gives you rust tones and so forth. Uh, works great. They show it for railroading, but it works just about on anything here. Um, and then the last one, is their neutral gray kit which is just a bunch of uh, grays going into blues this is the best one to experiment with um, you can also use uh, dye um, or india ink i should say not dye um, to experiment with because it's very thin and it'll get you used to how to use the airbrush with a medium that is extremely thin uh, the uh, that type of stuff you do not have to use any type of thinner these ones should be also pre-mixed so we'll grab one of those out of here And as you hopefully can hear, it has a little ball in it to get it shaken up really well. And you de definitely want to shake it for a little while because it'll get all the particles suspended in the actual medium. And that's what you really want when you're airbrushing. You don't want this stuff to separate. Okay. Now I've got my compressor turned on, uh, believe it or not, it's silent because it has that extra little tank on it. Um, I've got it set for about uh, 15 PSI, and which should shoot this paint, but we can always change that. One of the things you'll get used to, again, when I talk about getting into the Zen zone with your airbrush, is a lot of times you'll be able to just listen at the air pressure coming out of the airbrush and you'll know what air pressure you're shooting at. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice but you can tell uh, basically when you're too high or when you're too low just by listening to it. So uh, every so often you'll hear the compressor kick on and refill um, so uh, be prepared for that. shouldn't be too loud though it's a pretty quiet compressor. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything is working right in the airbrush and I'm just going to shoot water. This will make sure there's no leaks and no problems. So I'll take my eyedropper and I'll just put a little bit of water in the color cup itself. And again, when I press down, if my needle is seated correctly, I shouldn't get any type of water through here. It should be just air. Then as I press down and pull back, I should start getting water out of the end of the airbrush. And I know it's hard to see on the video, but it's actually coming out. Water's clear, of course, so it's hard to see. But it's coming out okay. Um, doesn't look like when I press down, I'm not getting any bubbling here or any problems here. Also, you can look at the water in the color cup. And if I press down and I'm getting bubbles, back bubbles in here, then I got a problem again. First thing to do is try tightening everything down, see what's happening, reinsert the needle, take it out and reinsert it, uh, try it again, see if uh, that takes care of the problem, and it usually will. So now that we know that everything's working smoothly, I'm going to dump out the water. I'm going to use my spray station and spray out the rest till it's completely gone. Okay. And just so it doesn't affect the paint that I'm going to put in it, take my cotton swab and I'm going to swab out the inside of any remaining water in there. Double check, make sure that none of the swab got in there. You can kind of see where the needle, you can actually see the needle going right through there. And you can see where it feeds down into the uh, nozzle system. Okay, so I'm going to take the paint, twist it open. Now again, this should be set for airbrushing. To double check that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my cups here and I'm going to pour a little bit in the cup. And they might have actually put a little cover in here to keep it from leaking on the shelf. So be sure to remove that. Otherwise, you'll be wondering what's going on like I was. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. Now we're cooking. Okay. Now I'll put a couple of drops in here. Just kind of look at the consistency of it. And this is another reason I suggest having pre-mixed paints ready to go for airbrushing when you first start. Because this will show you about what the consistency you want, no matter what type of paint you have. Should be about the cons consistency of milk. Um, if it's a little thicker, uh, you can always add a little bit of water, whatever thinner it takes to uh, help get it to this consistency. Okay, so we're looking good there. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the airbrush. You don't need much. Maybe fill it maybe a tenth of the way up because you're just going to be practicing at first. Okay. And again, we're going to go through the same steps. We're going to press down, make sure there's no bubbling anywhere. Make sure I'm not getting any problems with it spraying out when it should just be air. And then I'm going to start pulling back slowly. You'll see the paint start to come out. Now, first thing you'll see when you first start spraying is you usually see it sprays out pretty fast, leaves a ring, um, looks kind of bad. So that's okay because when you first start experimenting you're gonna you're gonna get weird effects anyways so try pulling down the trigger and pulling it back sweep back and forth a few times making uh, slight lines and you can see it's spraying smoothly but it's actually flucking around a little bit and if we go a little thicker you can see it even more Okay, and what I'm talking about is right on the edge there, there's a lot of splatter over the edge. Now that can be a couple of problems. Could be air pressure that's uh, basically not enough. Uh, what happens is the air pressure will come out with the paint. The paint is not being directed very much by the air pressure and it just wants to scatter. It just takes off and it just makes a big wide pattern. So you got to be careful of that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my air pressure and I'm going to increase the air pressure by a little bit. And you can kind of hear it's saying go way up or way down. So we'll increase it a little bit more and we'll try it again. Okay. Now it's coming out, and it's coming out a lot smoother. It's coming out faster, but it's a lot smoother. You don't have a lot of that over the over splatter on the edges. So now to just give you an idea of what how things can go wrong and what you'll see if you do it too much one way or any or the other, I'll lower the air pressure. Okay, I'll get it down really low, and the problem that you're going to have with this is you can really see it splatter and it really is kind of uneven and it also does what they call spidering and what I'm talking about that is like right here the paint actually has a halo around it a dark halo and then the air pushed that wet paint over to the side making little spider legs looks like a little spider centipede that you squashed on your paper so that's going to be an indicator that you have not enough air pressure because it's just throwing down the paint the paint isn't atomizing it but the air is just kind of pushing it around so if you're getting that you know to actually increase your air pressure now if i go the other direction and do a ton of it what's going to happen is as i spray and you can already see it as you can see it starts to skip and the reason it's skipping is it's actually drying the paint before it hits your surface and it's going to be almost impossible to do a consistent line while you're doing this because it's always going to spot and it's also going to clog up your airbrush much much faster when you're doing this the pigments in the paint will dry and sometimes they'll even dry in your airbrush clogging the whole system up so too much air pressure is is also a bad thing so what you're going to need to do is just keep working with the air pressure get it to where 
you're getting a nice comfortable pattern a little bit more and always listen to it uh, as you adjust your air pressure press down the trigger and then increase the air pressure and you can hear it and you'll know how far you're going okay now we're back to the sweet zone or sweet spot of actual air and paint mixture now this will take some practice going back and forth like I said use the a water-based simple pre-mixed paint to get used to what you're doing usually use a dark color either gray or black that way you can really see what's going on uh, the other thing to help with airbrushing is a lot of times when I first start airbrushing a uh, model I get cramped or I just I'm very hesitant in the way my arm moves and it has nothing to do with the airbrush so what I'll do is I'll do an exercise is I'll just take a piece of paper and I'll take a pen or pencil something that's easy rolling and I'll just make figure eights circles squares and I'll just get my wrist loose and be able to move in all motions uh, especially if you have a little bit of uh, either carpal tunnel or arthritis this is almost a must but even if you don't your hand just over during the day gets stiff your muscles get stiff uh, so just work work all those out move the pencil different directions move around this is this is the exercise training that you really need to do that a lot of people forget about um, and they are their airbrush paint jobs will go from <clears throat> looking very st stuttery to an actual smooth on the same paint job <clears throat> so if you want to start out with everything being smooth and your wrist movements being very smooth also swipe like this try to get consistent lines while you're doing this without the airbrush in your hand and do this probably for a good five to ten minutes and that will really loosen you up and get you to where you can move the airbrush at the same and then do a practice with your airbrush doing the same motions doing figure eights loops squares and then lines and this will get you practice and get you loosened up now one of the other techniques of getting used to what your airbrush is going to do is where it's going to shoot basically what you want is you want your airbrush uh, to put the paint down where you want it and to do this uh, you'll see professional airbrush do this a lot they'll actually start from off of their item pull the trigger for the air move to the surface and then start pulling back from paint this does two things first thing it does is if you have any paint build up on the end the air spraying it out will make a splatter it'll clean it out and it'll clean it somewhere where you don't where you don't want it you, if you do it on your model it's going to leave a splatter and you're going to be frustrated so doing that beforehand before moving into your surface cleans the tip off for you uh, the second thing it does is it gets you on track to what you're going to be painting you can always tell if you paint and then pull onto your surface if you're not where you want to be and you're only doing air you don't have to paint uh, so you can start over you can do it again you can keep doing this until you actually are on the line you want and then that's when you actually pull the trigger uh, the other thing is is when you end your stroke try to end spraying of the paint while you're still moving don't end the paint and the trigger movement at the same time you'll get a blotch you'll be going like this and you'll stop and then you'll get the splatter at the end so make sure it's a, a smooth stroke going on and then keep going like that so practice that and that will actually get you down to you'll know when to pull the trigger and when to let go and that will make your paint jobs a lot less frustrating because you'll be able to keep from going off where you don't want to so take a couple 20 30 minutes if you're first starting in doing that if you're uh, an airbrush artist you know do it as long as you do, want until you feel comfortable with what you're actually doing 
So those are some actual tips on doing that. And I'll show you one other targeting tip next.